What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Over the summer, the San Antonio Spurs drafted the best player in the NBA draft with the number one overall pick. And this player just so happens to be the greatest NBA draft prospect in the history of the league. And you probably know who that is. Victor Wimbenyama, a.k.a. Wimby, the 7'4", 7'5", phenom with guard-like skills. That guy. And with that being said, I had concerns before the draft lottery, before the Spurs even found out they would have the number one pick, you can go check the YouTube channel. I put out at least one or two videos about why I had concerns and why I didn't want Victor Wembanyama to get drafted by the San Antonio Spurs because Greg Popovich is so uh, stubborn in his coaching ways, especially over the last probably decade, he likes to put caps on players' potentials, and there have been players that played under Greg Popovich that have voiced their opinion on being disgruntled with him not letting them play to their potential, not necessarily in a way that would take away from the game either. So one of my concerns was A, Popovich putting a cap on Wemby and also not playing him enough minutes. And here we are. Like the soothsayer that I may or may not be. <laughs> Victor Wimbanyama, the young man, the number one draft pick, is logging under 30 minutes a game. He's logging under 29 minutes a game. As of me making this video, there is no reason to be playing Victor Wimbanyama under 29 minutes a game. Victor Wimbanyama has showed no significant injury history or concerns in his entire basketball career, predating the NBA. Well, his involvement in the NBA as a player. He is not injury prone. He has nothing to worry about. He is a young player. Why the hell is he only playing about 28 and a half minutes per game? Think about this. There is about 20 minutes of basketball, 20 minutes of shot clock, where Victor Wembanyama, your best player, a player that has the potential to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time, we'll see what happens, but he is missing 20 minutes of time, clock time, inside the basketball game, each game. 20 minutes of game clock where Victor Wimbanyama is sitting on the bench. He doesn't have conditioning problems and cardio problems like the seven foot six Yao Ming. Yao Ming was seven foot six, right? I think he is. But Yao couldn't get up and down the court. That was one of his problems. He doesn't have injury problems like Andrew Bynum, bad knees, or Greg Oden. This guy is completely healthy. Completely young. Popovich, please. Do not put a cap on this guy. And you're wondering why the San Antonio Spurs record is as bad as it is. Granted, I still didn't think they would make the playoffs. Even if Wimby played 38 minutes, 36 minutes, whatever. But I can promise you they probably would have won more games. If Wimby's getting, you know, an extra 10 minutes, an extra 8 minutes. You, you, you know the potential? Do you know the possibilities? That Pop isn't even tapping into right now? Wimby is an impact player. Maybe not the most impactful in the league, but by far and away the most impactful player you have on your roster. And uh, maybe in two, three, four years, he'll, he could possibly be the most impactful player in the whole entire league. He's already shown that he's a beast on defense. And his offensive game is coming around now that Pop finally made some more changes. And it seems like people are finally starting to pass him the ball a little bit more. But he's still not getting it as much as he should. 
This is concerning. This is concerning. He didn't do this with Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, through the prime of his career, was playing in the mid to upper 30s in minutes. Tim Duncan even had one season, I think the 2001-2002 season, if I'm not mistaken. Tim Duncan was averaging 40 minutes per game. And he had a long stretch of 36, 37, 38, 39 minutes per game. Tim Duncan wasn't getting minutes comparable to what Wemby's getting now until Tim Duncan's 14th season in the league. So why the hell is a rookie Victor Wembanyama logging Tim Duncan minutes 14 years into his career outside of his prime? Please explain that to me. Somebody. This doesn't make any sense. Greg Popovich, play the young man. He's sensational. And he's going to keep getting better with more exposure and more minutes on the court when the brights are on the brightest. When the bleachers are filled with fans. Pop, play the young man. I don't get it. And you and you might sit and argue, well, the league was different back then. That's why Duncan was getting more minutes. It wasn't as fast-paced. The up-and-down game isn't what it was today. That's all true. That's absolutely true. But these players are conditioned and bred for this environment. They have no problem getting up and down the court with this pace. And it shows in his game. He's a hybrid big. He has guard-like skills. This is what he does. He can push the tempo. He can get up and down. What are we talking about? Pop, you messing up, bro. Who am I to question Greg Popovich, one of the greatest coaches of all time? I get it. I get it. But Lord Jesus, doesn't mean this guy is uh, absolved of criticism and he's right 100% of the time. He's got to play this guy more. You got to. Anyway, that's all I got to say about it. Let me know what you think about it. I appreciate each and every one of you for stepping in. Much love, peace. Please let me know, do you agree, do you disagree? I know I've heard some Spurs fans be like, oh, no reason to push it this early. Why not? He's, a, he's young. What are we doing? Let him go. It's not dangerous to play the mid-30s. and It's not dangerous to play 36 minutes a game as a 20-year-old. Where are we getting this from? All right, I'm out. Peace.